I'm Alicia McLeod and grew up as a Mormon going to church um, on a weekly basis. We went to youth group growing up. Um, but when I became a teenager and started driving, I quit going to church. I decided that's not what I wanted to do. My mom passed away in 2007 and they had just kind of got me more into more of a rebellious stage and, and drinking and I ended up meeting Andrew in 2009 and we started dating. Um, we ended up getting married and we weren't saved. We were going to church but that was just kind of a face that we put on for everybody. We started arguing a lot, fighting over finances, just not agreeing on things and ended up separating and Andrew's addiction kind of came to light with everything which which made things even harder and during that time is really when I just got down on my knees and I opened up the Bible one day and I really had no clue where to start and I just started crying and, and praying and that's really when I accepted Jesus into my heart. I'm Andrew McLeod. My story, you know, I similar only I went to a Methodist church as a kid. My mom actually was one of the Sunday school teachers and you know we went every Sunday um, but it wasn't ever something that I really I don't think I ever really paid attention you know and I think I believed that there was a God but I didn't really know much about him because I never really cared to pay attention in, in class. I, I started you know going down the, the road of just going out all the time and, and, and doing all the things that was far from what God would want you to do. And uh, I went down that road even further in college. Uh, shortly after I moved to Iowa, I met my wife and uh, we ended up you know, getting engaged and having our daughter. I ended up, uh, my wife and me separated and my I had uh, an addiction issue that, that came to light, you know, and uh, my wife moved over here to the south side while we were separated and, you know, we ended up saying that we needed to pick a church, which was kind of funny that I think I'm the one that brought up the conversation to her, even though I was in the midst of a horrible addiction and everything about what I was doing was far from pointing towards God. And, you know, we went to church here and met Andy that first day. It wasn't that long into preaching and I just told my wife I had to use the bathroom and I, as soon as I got out of that gymnasium, I just ran out the front doors and ran down the road to our house and I got in my car and just, I, I disappeared for a while, you know, and, and I think I just felt so convicted on what he was preaching about at that point. I felt like I could have burst in flames, you know, that day. That was, I think that was the start of the process of God really doing a work on us and doing a work on me. You know, shortly after there, I went to jail, and I was just so angry. And I don't know that I was angry at anyone. I think I was more angry at myself. And I just remember I was in my cell, and I just got on my knees, and I, I, I was just shaking because I was so angry. And I just prayed to God. I said, God, I, I don't know if you're listening, if you're there. I said, but I said I can't do this anymore. I said, either help me and take this anger from me or I'm gonna end up killing myself or killing someone. And I just remember feeling a relief of anger and just like a presence of God for the first time in my life. You know, meeting with Andy and after I got out, that's just, that's what finally got me to a point where I knew I couldn't do what I, I did anymore. And I just needed God in my life and I needed to turn my life over to Him. You know, I knew I wasn't, I couldn't, control my life anymore because when I did it just led to to not good things that's when I, I I really started to meet with Andy and then me and my wife started to meet with Andy I feel that's when I finally finally was saved at that point in time one of the challenging parts about the the counseling was that you know that I think we both knew that my addiction obviously was the forefront of one of the issues that we had, but there was just a lot more that that God had, a lot more for work that God had to do on us than just that. Yes, I was doing things wrong and everybody's a sinner, but in my mind I would always justify Andrew as 
being so much worse and him the main factor with everything that was going on. So I think it was challenging in the fact of Andy really holding me accountable for everything that I was doing wrong in my part as well. And, and then also teaching us um, how to turn to God through all of this and go, go to his word as well. And um, I mean, that's not something that's not how Andrew and I communicated. So that was challenging to be able to turn that way as well, um, but rewarding at the same point in time. There's been a lot that we've still been going through and dealing with through as we've done, you know, counseling and since, you know, that we've we've been here, you know, it's been almost two years basically since we really started the biblical counseling and, and there's been a lot of things that we've we've gone through in that time because of my past actions, you know, and we have been able to turn to God, you know, so much more on these things and we've been able to trust in Him, you know, in, in these things and not saying that we're perfect in that. You know, we don't always do it right away, but, you know, we at least have been able to, whether it be between one of us talking to the other person and trying to direct that person that way, or when we meet with Andy, direct us that way, you know, to go through these things. And I feel like we've been a lot happier and a lot more joyful people and you know the things that we've dealt with I think that if it wasn't for us having this biblical counseling and meeting with Andy and stuff like that I don't think that we would be together I don't think that our family would be together I don't think we would be very happy people I don't think we would have a lot of happiness through all these trials that we've gone through through all of this before the counseling I would always try to put my trust in, in Andrew and obviously that was broken with everything that we had to go through and I've learned I have to put my trust in God and with him anything is possible and it may not work out how I want it to work out but I'm able to trust that he has a plan for everything and everything will work out according to to what he wants and, and how he wants it to turn out. Obviously we have a lot of growth to do and we have a lot of ways to still improve but at least we're able to communicate a lot better and we can turn to his word to help us through situations as well as they arise also. You know, we've we've gone through a lot from before we started the counseling and even while we've been in the counseling we've had to deal with a lot of things that that, you know, a lot of a lot of people, you know would probably not go through, you know, and, and we've gone through them and, and we've made them I think we've been going through them pretty well. You know, because of the fact of the, the counseling that we've had and just the point of direction to God, you know, and, and I don't think if we, if we didn't get pointed in that direction, it was just normal counseling. I don't feel that we, because we would rely upon each other and, and rely upon our own will and not God's will to know that, you know, through these trials that, you know, we can persevere you know, and that we can come out a better person through these trials.